and there was always a sort of a feel just get a couple of amateur fights get it out of the way and then go pro whereas now an example i would use would be kieran clark 20 fights 20 amateur fights and now he's going to go pro back in my day it was two or three fights and then there was a rush to go pro so d fitz she's just kind of beginning her amateur career now and um, one of the strongest tiny people I've ever met in my life. Uh, a fantastic athlete, novice enough yet on the, on the martial arts side of things. She is only here a couple of months, but she is such a physical specimen. It's going to be difficult for any any girl her way past the field. Are you okay there? I cut that as well. You can. You need someone wears slister. And James is up to it's, it's easy to forget how young he is. He's only 22, so yes. all he's done. But what are you, are you surprised by how quick he's risen and how the height he's reached in, in such a short of time? Uh, not really, because, like you said, actually he's been trained fairly solid for about 10 years now, which is crazy when you think about it. But he has been pretty much living with me since he's 15. And all of this was, was fairly well planned out. Um, you know, the his amateur career and then, and then going to Bellator and, and what we've done since so I'm not that surprised considering the work that I know that was done since he was 13, 14. Um, well, it's bigger and better so 25 minutes down the road. Sorry? The monster, some Yeah, the monster, I like that. Connor Duncan, the monster, so went from the shed to the monster. So it's about, I mean, this building is pretty big, but it's, it's at least 50% bigger than here. Um, so, uh, everything's just a little bit newer and better in the new place. I can't really give away too much yet. I keep going to say something and then pulling myself back. We have some big announcements on, 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 on equipment partners we have, uh, supplement partners we have. A, a lot of new stuff coming in that, I, that I'm, I'm, I'm holding myself back and saying. But yeah, bigger and better. It's my 10th gym in a... In a 17 year period and we've always gone up a level every time we moved this will be no different what did you make of our from spring up of debut obviously he's falling out of what did you make of his debut what are his chances against Paul? um yeah wow the uh it was, it was brutal it was brutal to watch uh, i'll be honest and say it's not for me it's not my uh, it's not my sport i'm mixed martial arts um but artem is doing very well there and that's that's his world um, against Pauly, yeah, it's, I mean, Pauly's obviously a very good technical boxer, he's boxed his whole life, but this is very, very different, there's some clinch positions and stuff like that that are, that are allowed in this, that are not allowed in classical boxing. Uh, yeah, it falls on the same night as, obviously, as, as Bellator London, so I won't be there, but uh, I wish him the very best. I'm just ahead of Bellator Dublin, you said to me about uh, Bellator, you know, through their new... Uh, more like clubs they have on the European circuit, they've given your fighters you know, like a light at the end of the tunnel. Is that something that after the show that you felt on the match that there's more of a buzz from the guys who maybe didn't get into Bellator? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's, it's completely changed the professional scene in Ireland. Uh, you know, do, do, before, before the thinking of the average fighter was, let's go on one of the bigger UK shows, you fight for a few hundred, and eventually, you know, let's say Connor, you know, you fight, you fight for a small, very small amount of money in the hope that you get to the big show. Now the guys are able to get to that level of financial freedom much, much sooner. And even, even the fact, like for me, I get tired of going to the States all the time. It's a long L haul. To be able to do most of the fights, I mean, I think from September on, there will be eight shows in a 12 month period in Europe. That's pretty much as many shows as we need to go anyway keep all the guys I have there um, active. I'm sure I'll have to go to the States. Actually, I am in the States in July with a couple of the guys. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing and you feel it on the mat, you feel it with everybody. Just that little bit of sigh of relief that it's not just scraping money together. You get an injury, can you afford to go to a physio? I mean, that was a thing that would be part of their thinking. Now, that's, now it's not. So what Bellator were able to do to the scene here, um, it's, it's been phenomenal. It's, uh, it's, it's a huge relief for me as a coach and it, it allows you to kind of make plans even me being able to take on another full-time coach and Dave Roach wouldn't have been able to afford to do that in the past um, so very it's very exciting I feel a very exciting period ahead of me taking the next wave of guys and giving them uh, great careers just one more on James 
obviously he's only 22 years old, but he has to rebound from a loss where you know, he has a lot of back online the line people out there. Are you been impressed by the way he's managed to you know, pull it off in a headline show and then bounce back straight away? Uh, impressed, yes. Surprised, no. Um, it wasn't that much of a mystery to me how he would react to that. I, I knew he, he was very confident. He's in a gym of big names, he's in a gym of the highest highs and the lowest lows. He's been part of all of that and he's seen the right way to do things, which is just part of his personality anyway. He's got a great family behind him, great support system. And we know the difference between Instagram world and real world. A lot of people are wondering about your relationship with Valentine. Is that a business relationship you guys have or is it just the fact you have so many fighters that are fighting for them at the moment? It's the fact there's so many fighters with them. Like if I compare, obviously you have a big show with UFC, and I probably am getting two or three fights per year with the UFC, over 30 fights in 12 month period with Bellator. So it's 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 literally just I have more people there. Um, I think I've 24 signed to Bellator now. And I've got what Brad, Eddie, uh, I've got someone else. Uh, that, that's how bad my memory is. But it just, uh, just a lot less activity with them. Um, still dealing with the UFC quite, quite regularly. Um, so there's no, no bad feeling for me in UFC anyway. Let's, let's, yeah. let's make that clear. There's no, there's no way like that. People can come to this gym and they can only go to Bell. Oh no, 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 no. And that used to be a mis that used to be a misconception people would have that uh, even back in the day, say, so I'd have some guys they say. Oh, I don't want to do a fight in Bellator because then I'm then I'm uh, ostracized from, from UFC. Whereas now we're seeing a lot more uh, fighters across from different promotions. I know Bellator and Cho in, in Asia they've kind of swapped over fighters and stuff. So I I, th I think what it's done is it's it's made the market more uh, appealing to fighters. You know because before there was a very strong monopoly, and I think what Bellator and, and, and some of the other shows, PFL and others, they. they Kind of made it where the fighters have a bit more uh, bargaining power, I guess, on where they should go. Um, yeah, I've, I've, to be honest with you, I've actually asked the likes of Sean Shelby direct questions. Look, if a guy does a couple of fights in Bellator, is he blacklisted from UC? And I'd rather not answer. It's all, no, not at all. At the end of the day, all organizations want successful fighters that create emotional interest in their fights. You know, you're on a great win streak from UFC, and you've got a massive following, and then suddenly you're a free agent. Of course, both organizations will want you. And that's the same either way around. You're on a massive win streak with Bellator, and you have this all this media behind you. Like, say, I know MVP is just coming off a loss now. He's, 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 I'm sure he'll come back to that. But there, there's a guy that I'm sure when his next negotiations come up, but you think UFC wouldn't jump on a guy like that that fills, you know, uh, brings a massive crowd with him wherever he goes? Of course. Did that uh, Dublin show, did that even blow away your expectation? Because I think until the night, nobody realized how big that would be. Uh, being on Sky Sports, it felt like a lot of stars were born that night as well. Does it feel like it even kind of surpassed your expectations in some way? I had big expectations yes. going on. <laughs> I had big expectations going on. I had said it was, it was warming up to be a feel of that uh, historic Dublin show. Um, and it just felt like that, you know, some of the high points in my head is, is Wheelie's walkout, is Gallagher's walkout, uh, watching Redmond, uh, Paul Redmond, make that comeback against Charlie. You know, there was there was great moments in that for all the teams and the fans. Um, I, I think uh, I heard a Bellator guy, one of the high up guy execs, saying, "Rather do five shows around Europe, let's do five in Ireland." <laughs> you know, because they just don't get a crowd like that. I think San Jose is probably the other big strong point in the States and they said that, that was the kind of feel I had. It definitely has a bigger reach than the other, like in terms of uh, clicks and stuff like that, than uh, the other European shows, right? Dublin seems to be a real hook for this at the moment, the European shows. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, every, show, every show you could think of in Europe in the last 24 months has wanted to align with me to put on a big Dublin show because they know the Dublin fan base is just different. Than, than, than anywhere else, you know. There's the, I'm sure the London show is going to be great, and the, the, there's a great fan base there. I'm sure it's going to sell out. But there's a Dublin show, and then there's other shows. And uh, now to have like two set dates a year, uh, September and February, I believe that's going to be set for the next number of years. So I know I've got two big shows where I have to get the Lewis down to it. I don't have to fly anywhere. I don't have to worry about that. I can sleep in my own bed. That's, that's fantastic, that's two big events per year to kind of strike off. 
and I know they'll always be sold out. The last one, I think in the build-up, we were saying big things, but there was doubters online, like, oh, it's all big talk, and, and then suddenly it was sold, you know, it was sold out, and I think a lot of people are like, oh, so I think when the next one goes on sale, it's going to sell out even quicker, because there's so many people fight week, they got in touch with me and said, so, oh, yeah, give us uh, 20 tickets for the show, and like, there is none, you know, there is none left. And, uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I know you can say that, but, no, no, there actually is none left. You know, maybe there was some left up in the rafters, but if you want to be part of the atmosphere, if you want to be down near the cage, if you want to be anywhere in those areas where the crowd is really going, you want to pick them up when they go on sale. Have you only updated Neymar as well? Obviously, you spoke in a recent interview um, with Ryan Tuberty about um, putting a proposal together and a yes. better proposal this time yes. around. Uh, what is the situation there? So for IMA? Yeah. As in our proposal to, to the government, Ireland. to Sport Ireland and yeah. the Ministry. So yeah. we have our um, EGM on Saturday in Cork. And we have a few, um, I'm, I'm now I'm using the wrong terminology, proposals before to the membership body. If they are voted in, that will change our constitution slightly. But we pretty much have our strategic plan now done, which is the for the next four years, and it's what and it ticks all the boxes that Sport Ireland asks us for. Uh, you know, we've guard of vetting, child protection policies, uh, coaching courses. We've, we've everything done. All the work has been done. We've been kind of quiet. We just had our heads down for the last year. Uh, we had two excellent um, uh, consultants come in and do help us with it uh, as the board together and the membership body and that's kind of this Saturday is the final piece of that puzzle. We get that. We have already some communication with Sport Ireland on setting up the next meeting. I want to go to them when we have that those proposals passed by the body and say look here we are. We've, we've ticked all the boxes. We want to be our own national governing body and uh, let's stress test it. They might come back and say well yeah, you did great on these, but these two points have to be fixed. We'll fix them and we'll propose again. But uh, we're not going anywhere. We're a big sport. We've got big membership. We've got big numbers. You know, we had wingman there on Sunday. That's shown in slightly different side. Obviously, this side here. Sorry, this side here is about the uh, the very tippy top one percent professionals. But as you guys know, there's a huge under base of the pyramid there. That's casual people that just train for fun, and obviously the big amateur scene now. And those guys deserve the recognition that the, the boxers are getting, that the table tennis players are getting, the tennis players, the swimmers. We're, we're a real sport, like Pinocchio said, we're a real boy, we're a real sport. And we're going to them, we want regulation, we want to be told what we have to fix. But, but is the real problem on their end, in terms of them you know, not wanting to learn about the sport still? Is that still an issue if they reached out to you and wanted to learn about the sport? Because obviously there's a clear differentiation between um, what you want funding for, which is the amateur side of the sport, in terms of relation to the professional side. Yeah, and when you say reach out, it's like it's it's us that have to reach out to them, yeah. and we weren't ready yet. You know, uh, we have recently in the last few weeks, and they've responded favorably to our request for a meeting, and they're interested and they're complimented us on some of the work we've already done. So I guess our next meeting, I'll be better able to answer that to you. But but I'm I feel very I'm I'm always an optimist, so I'm very optimistic. I think that when the guys see, when Sport Ireland see what we've done since we've last seen them, when we hadn't done all the things that were required for a new sport to go on that journey towards recognition. We have now, we're ready. This Saturday is a very, very important general meeting for the body. We need to get our resolutions passed. Resolutions. We need to get our resolutions passed, uh, which I'm very confident of. Fix all that up and then in we go. And uh, let's get let's get it passed. John, you had, uh, you had the SmackDown Women's Champion from WWE, Becky Lynch, in here uh, last week. Can you tell me a bit about what what happened there. Yeah, um, she's uh, she's been in a few times. She actually used to train in SBG ten years ago, believe it or not. She used to do privates in, in SBG City Center. I always heard about this crazy wrestler girl that was learning flying armbars and stuff. But I didn't really know anything about her. Fast forward all these years, and then she was in a couple of months ago. And then she was in again last week. And then we had Big Sheamus. He he showed up yesterday. We did a workout with him. Um, so yeah, we we're starting to kind of get a bit of a bond with uh, with WWE. Uh, anytime, so anytime one of their stars is in town, they, they tend to drop by. There was the tag team champion guy Brian. Uh, yeah, he was in. He was a great guy. Uh, yeah, it's always you know it's a bit of fun. Show them a few moves. They show us a few moves. And you went to the show then the next night. I went to the show that night, and uh, I've never been to one. I'd never been to a live, and I actually hadn't even watched one since I was a kid, since Hulkamania. And uh, what I did notice. I could feel right away was when Becky walked out. There's this star quality, you know. I've always people are like, "What's this between Connor and this guy?" And it's it's so hard to to quantify, but there's such a rare quality called charisma, which a handful of people on the planet have, and she has it. 
and she just walked up and it was just a different feel. The whole crowd just, you feel this electricity. And she held them all in the palm of her hand. She's a great performer. She's a lovely person, great girl. And uh, yeah, she's always welcome here. Right, let's go for that. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody.